Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, we are going to talk about Eurocode 1992 Part 4 regarding fasteners. In this playlist, I'm going to model one uh, pre installed plate inside the concrete and uh, apply the loads, and then we can check how it works and how it should be designed. Also, at the end, I'm going to cross-check the calculation with the PECO designer, which is uh, commonly used for the designing of these plates. And we will get to know what factor would affect what part of the design. It's very important when you are modeling uh, embedded plate, for example, inside the concrete, and then you are using a free uh, license software in this case like PECO designer then you know if something is wrong what needs to be increased not just increasing the size of the plates perhaps with another solution you might get the results without increasing the size of the plate uh, or increasing the uh, cost of the plates i will try to divide this uh, solution as long as it might be a little bit longer than usual i will divide it in several videos that we can go through a step by step and learn how to design manually. You can write either an Excel file or a MATCAD code for yourself if you are not using a standard PECO designer or any other uh, products. So let's do so. In this example, we will go through the introduction and we continue with other videos how to design. The code that we are going to talk about in this uh, video is uh, Eurocode 1992 uh, part four, which is related to fasteners uh, in concrete, which is the same as ACI 318 chapter 17, uh, considering when we have a pre-installed or even post-installed embedded plate, uh, inside the concrete how to analyze and how to confirm that for the given loads it is uh, working so in this uh, example uh, we assume we have a wall made of concrete four meters by four meters and suppose that we are going to have one embedded plate pre-installed inside the concrete and we have one section on the top will led to the plate which is under the given loads in the design base n m and shear force let's go with b uh, suppose that the normal force in the design value is 120 kilonewton as a compressive load and bending moment design value is 20 kilonewton meter and shear force is 10 kilonewton. Suppose that the center of this plate is located in the distance of 800 millimeter from the edge of concrete and this code is not giving the design of the reinforcement wall except for supplementary reinforcement if needed to take care of the shear force and sometimes for the a splitting uh, failure which will come later in this video uh, what does that mean so now we are going to check this plate uh, embedded inside the concrete to deliver the, the given loads in the design phase so in uh, Eurocode 2 part 4 you can find the regulations and also the items that needs to be checked we will go through them uh, one by one First of all, we need to select or find a proper embedded plate uh, inside the concrete. There are plenty of these uh, uh, plates which are made with different factories. Uh, here in Finland, for example, we have PECO, which is providing uh, a lot of options that you can make by your task and your uh, situation. Uh, the product is called VELDA in PECO uh, website and if you google it you will find 
the catalog of this uh, product as technical manual it is provided in English and also Finnish and here since the video is recorded in English I will go with the English version but I would suggest even if you are not able to translate the Finnish check from here and go with the numbers given in Finnish version since the values might be different according to the national annex here we can see that we have Vella, Vella R, Vella R, R, A, A, R, a strong, a strong R and a strong A and plate materials uh, also with the given a standard anchor material are given in this table too and the dimensions also are given in the other tables like table 3 for the Velda basic anchorage plate and for this example I will go with this Velda 300, 300, 165 and the uh, dimensions are given here also with the PECO designer application you can directly select which kind of product you are selecting and you can easily check which one is the preferred one so here for now we will go through the dimensions to sketch uh, our plate so B L H T H effective S1 S2 and the diameter of the bolt embedded inside the concrete is given including the number of bolts in or anchors in each direction X and Y if we come back to here you can see the illustrative dimensions in this picture so here you can find the um, dimensions in the table and also the given picture we have 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter plate and we have the anchors which the spacing in one are uh, one and two both are given as 180 millimeter so this distance will be 300 minus 180 120 divided by 260 millimeter and 60 millimeter as well as the other direction 60 and 60 all in millimeter now number of x and number of y as stated in the table are two and if we look at the plate from the side view we will see this plate and also anchors connected to that so the total height uh, is not given in this table but H effective is given which is 157 millimeter diameter of the anchor is given as 16 millimeter thickness of the plate is 15 and also you can find the material in the uh, technical table in the technical uh, manual in table number two for example for Velda basic product the plate material is S355 and the anchor is SD1 black and in the footnote of this table you can find out F by K which is greater than 350 megapascal and FUK greater than 450 megapascal so these are the required information this kind of anchors which are uh, with a head bigger than the shank are called headed fasteners so the next step is uh, putting this uh, loads on the top of that and find out the required checking from the code suppose that the wall thickness is 400 millimeter so it should be greater than the plate and let's sketch the top view of the plate and also the wall to understand the dimensions and then we go through the code 400 millimeter is the thickness of the wall and we are placing the center of this plate in 800 millimeter so over here is the center and the plate is 300 millimeter so it should be from here to here and the location of anchors what we need to determine is the distances from the center of the anchors towards the edge of concrete we can see that the horizontal distance is quite uh, 
enough but in the transversal direction uh, to the edge of the concrete we have limitation and it's closed so that should be determined for all checkers coming later so this was 300 this distance was 60 millimeter and as far as the entire B and L are 300 millimeter so it will be 50 millimeter in each side if we are placing the plate in the center of the wall so here it will be 50 millimeter as a result this distance is 110 millimeter also the other distance to the edge the closer uh, distance is important as we can see the plate is located closer to the left edge in the horizontal direction compared to the other edge and here that distance will be from here to here is 650 it was the center to the edge was 800 now 650 plus 60 millimeter is 710 millimeter so this is the uh, main dimensions of the plate uh, when it is installed on this wall now some important notes to learn before we continue for the calculation first of all according to the code what effective depth is it is given in figure 3 1 of the code so fastening assembly of fixture and fasteners or anchor channel used to transmit loads to concrete are given here the bottom edge is the edge of the concrete here we can see the effective height in a without anchor plate its effective edge is from the uh, edge of the concrete to the edge of the head and if we have anchorage plate in one direction at least then edge effective as shown in the figure and with a small anchor plate given in c in both directions then edge effective is determined from the uh, edge of the concrete to the edge of the head as stated usually if you are using a standard profile or a standard anchor plate from company these values should be given as we saw in the technical manual so this is edge effective the other important note is the edge distances which is given in figure 3 4 of the code definition related to concrete member dimensions fastener spacing and edge distances in a we can see that the given illustrative figure is uh, related to a plate which is under only tension force and here one and two are the directions to calculate the edge distances and spacing s1 and s2 for example in here we can see s1 which is in the direction of one and s2 is in the direction of two c1 is the distance from the center of the anchor bolt to the edge of the concrete and then c1 is the same value in the other direction also if we have more than two bolts in each direction then we can say s21 s22 typically they are symmetrical and might be the same and in the other picture uh, option b or case b we can see that the shear force is determining the direction of the one and two typically if you have the dominant shear force in one direction always that direction is called s1 or direction one if we look at this uh, shear force given in the in the specified direction we can see that c1 is the distance the edge distance of the closer anchor bolt to the edge of the concrete in the direction of applied shear force so that direction is called one if we come to the other case here for example we can see that the direction of the shear force is specifying what direction is called one this is s1 and the other one is c1 and if we look at 
The other direction, we can see that we have S2 and C2 because the shear force direction is called 1. On the other hand, if we look at the other option, shear force is in this direction. In this case, this distance is called S2. And the distance from the edge of the concrete to the center of the bolts are called C1. Uh, this is a very good illustrative uh, figure, but in the code also, uh, whenever it is needed, the edge distance is explained uh, briefly what should be considered. The next important note from the code is the design format, which is given in uh, chapter clause, which is given in clause 4.3. Let's have a look on that a statement. Design format at the ultimate limit state ED or design value should be less than resistance value. In clause 4.3.4, uh, in the ultimate limit state, the value of the design resistance is, up, uh, is obtained from the characteristic resistance of the fastener, the group of fastener or anchor channels as follows. RD or the resistance in the design value should be uh, the fraction of characteristic value divided by partial factor gamma M. Then we need to find out uh, for which case, what kind of gamma M we need to use. In table 4.1 of this uh, standard, the partial factors are given. In table 4.1, we can see that if we are talking about a steel failure for fasteners, we have the options how to determine these uh, partial factors and also for concrete the table for one is longer than this one but this is the values that we might need uh, but you can check the table uh, what other factors or what other partial factors are given for the fasteners in the tension and shear with or without levier arm we will come to this point later uh, the gamma s or gamma ms is given for the first row which is relevant to tension gamma ms is determined according to the given equation for the shear then we have another statement which is given with these two and it is important to notice it is underlined with and and the other one with or also it is important to notice that the given table in the left is relevant to permanent and transient design situation. Uh, on the other side, in the right column, you can see the accidental design situation. If you are designing under ac accidental design situation, then the partial factor, which will be smaller. And also for concrete, we have gamma MC, which is concrete cone failure, concrete edge failure, concrete blowout uh, failure, pry out failure, and a splitting failure, pull out, combined pull out, and concrete failure. So here you can find out gamma MC, and there is gamma MC is gamma C times gamma instantaneous, and gamma C is taken as one point. 5 gamma instantaneous for headed fasteners is taken as 1. So then we can say that gamma MC is typically 1.5. So these are the uh, pre-requests information that we need to start to check the selected embedded plate uh, and confirm that the plate is strong enough for delivering the given loads in the design mode then uh, the plate might be under two main actions tension and shear so if we have compression in concrete we know that perhaps it can survive and concrete is pretty good to take care of compression but, but when it comes to the tension concrete is uh, very weak and that's why we have the anchors or the reinforcement to take care of the tension so if your plate like in this example is under a combination of compression and also bending moment it might be 
partially the plate will be under tension. As a result, the tension force will be delivered to the fasteners that can take care of that. On the other side of the plate, the plate will be, which is in direct contact to the concrete, is under compression. And also shear force as the main uh, action on this uh, plate needs to be checked. For example, assume that the plate is very close to the edge. Then if you have significant shear force, then it might affect to have another kind of failure. So these two are uh, important or major uh, actions on a, an embedded plate that needs to be checked. So these are given in chapter seven of the code. Let's start with class seven two, which is for the tension. So in chapter seven two, headed and post installed fasteners tension load seven two one, seven two one one required verifications. Verifications of table seven one apply the failure modes address are given in figure seven two one. So this is a very interesting. This is very uh, great figure from the code that you can easily find out what kind of failure might happen in the plate that you are designing. So in figure 7.1, we can see different failures. Uh, case A is a steel failure. It means that you have a very strong concrete and it's taking care of the load, but the steel is weak in terms of diameter and compared to the applied load. In that case, this is one uh, failure mode that might happen. So we need to check the steel anchorage bolt is uh, strong enough to transfer the tension if it is any tension. Then concrete cone failure, as we can see, if we have a tension and we have a, a strong bolt, then bolt will survive, but the concrete might um, fail due to the excessive tension in that phase then this kind of failure is called concrete cone failure pull out failure as stated in c is the the, the whole headed bolt is uh, coming out from the concrete without uh, cone failure happening the combined pull out and concrete failure of bonded fastener now now uh, assume that you have a strong anchor bolt, which case A is not happening, but the concrete and the bolt together might fail in a combination of case B and C, especially with, when you do not have any head at the end of the anchor bolt. So case D needs to be checked in that case. Case E, concrete splitting failure, we can see the figure it is clear that what would happen if for example we have a, a bolt very close to the bottom of the concrete for example in the uh, foundations which the depth is limited and case f concrete blowout failure which would happen when the bolt is very close to the edge and the bolt is under tension so these are the modes that might happen uh, necessarily you do not need to check all of these according to the um, layout of the plate and the anchors and also the given loads. Also we have a very uh, good table, table 7.1 in this code explaining what needs to be checked. Before then we go through that part, let's have a look of uh, what would happen in a case Assume that you have a plate and you have four bolts and the plate is under bending moment. If you sketch the plate from the side view, so this is bending moment and uh, these two bolts on the left will be under tension and then concrete here might be under compression. We will come to this later, but so now two bolts are intention so we can say that not an individual bolt is under tension a group of bolts are in tension 
let's increase the size of the plate and put more fasteners under a given bending moment again depending on the value of the uh, bending moment we might see that let's say this part is completely under tension and this is the concrete under compression as far as concrete is not taking any tension then these bolts will be under tension but the further the distance from the uh, center of the load or center of this bending moment that bolts are located the more tension they will take so then we can see that our group of the bolts are under different tension force so here for example this will be t1 then this might be t2 and then this will be t3 as a result we can see that the uh, tension is not equal for all the bolts here so in that case some of bolts are more loaded than the others so what needs to be checked we have two approaches one is the group of members it can be in this case anchor bolts or it can be individual element for example one individual bolt so in the given table table 7 1 we can find out what kind of check do we need to uh, consider when we are designing the plate under tension force so in table one required verifications for headed and post installed fasteners in tension failure mode is given uh, in the second column item number one steel failure of fastener so we can see that in the top we have single fastener or group of fasteners and for the group of fasteners again we have two options checking only most loaded fastener or the group so it depends on if the group are working all together or uh, we can just check the most critical fastener for example a steel failure of fastener so for the single fastener we need to check this value for the group also we need to check the most loaded it means that uh, we just need to determine what the load or the tension load in anchor bolts are according to the given loads and then check the most critical one so for this case option number one we don't need to check the group concrete cone failure we always have everything for single fastener and for the group of fasteners it depends on the failure mode for example for concrete cone failure we don't need to check a most or one most loaded fastener we just need to check the group of fasteners which are under the tension pull out failure the same concept only checking the most loaded combined pull out and concrete failure checking the group concrete splitting failure the group concrete blowout failure the group and a steel failure of reinforcement individual anchor failure or reinforcement again individual or most loaded fastener so these are things that we need to consider when we want to check this plate so first of all we need to determine the loads and also as we can see in this uh, clause we need to check the tension so as far as the plate is under a combination of bending moment and compressive force we need to determine uh, the tension zone and compressive zone of the plate for that in the chapter 6 of the code we have the instruction how to determine the tension force so 62 headed fasteners and post installed fasteners tension loads item number one the design value of tension loads acting on each fastener due to the design value of normal forces and bending moments acting on a rigid fixture may be calculated assuming a linear distribution of a strain as shown in figure 62 and a linear relationship between strains and stresses this is very important so it is uh, 
giving us the uh, permission to use the linear elastic distribution. In item D, in the zone of compression under fixture, the fasteners do not take up normal forces. So it means that if a fastener is under or is in the compressive zone, we consider the load in that uh, fastener to be zero. Uh, item C is also important. The modulus of elasticity of the concrete taken from 1992 one, one. Uh, It's given in this code, table 3.1. Uh, but as a simplification method, we can take EC as 30 gigapascal. For the steel, also the, the modulus of elasticity can be taken as 210 gigapascal. Also, it is given in relevant European technical product specification. Uh, but 210 gigapascal might be quite fine. The given figure, figure 6.2, uh, shows how to consider the relation between the stress and uh, between S strain in different zones. Here we can see that uh, this line represents the zero S strain. So if the bending moment is acting in the given direction, in this illustration, we can assume that the two rows of bolts on the left side are in tension. If we assume the zero zone or zero strain is in the shown dash line I sketched. So here, this line represents the strain in each member. This side is the tension zone or tensile zone. And the other side is compression zone. As we can see, and as stated in the uh, clause number one. So this bolt is in compression zone as the result N E D number three in this case is taken as zero. But here we have N E D one and E D two relevant to the bolts under tension. Also, we can write down that this is epsilon S, for example, one representing the S strain in the a steel row number one and this is a strain in a steel in row number two and for concrete we can assume that this part is epsilon c representing the S strain in concrete in the furthest edge NEDI is epsilon s i times e s representing the tension or the stress times area of the steel and for the concrete we can assume that the S-strain times the concrete modulus of elasticity is concrete compressive stress at the maximum level. X is the distance of the concrete which is in compression. B is the uh, width of the fixture, in this case the plate, and 0 0.5 representing the uh, triangle distribution. If we want to sketch this uh, in a 3D mode, if this is our fixture, and here is the zero strain line, this is FC, this distance is X, and this will be B of the fixture. So then the compressive load, as far as its triangle distribution, will be in the one third distance of one side as stated also here in the figure and the total force C C or C E D so it will be half of F C average value of the stress times area which is B times S. That was the end of this video. We went through the introduction of Eurocode 1992 part four. Uh, about embedded anchorage plate. We discussed about the theory and also the given instruction according to the relevant code. In the next video, we will continue to calculate the tension force due to the applied loading. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.